Hello, my name is John Gasper. I'm an Identity and Access Management Architect with Unicon. In collaboration with Microsoft, I'm demonstrating how to delegate Office 365 authentication to the Shibboleth IDP. Before we begin, let me share a few words about Unicon. Unicon has been in business for over 24 years and focuses on EdTech consulting services. Unicon is headquartered in Gilbert, Arizona, a suburb of Phoenix. Unicon is known for our work in identity and access management and integrations. We have lots of different folks, including engineers, UX designers, business analysts, project management, and strategic consultants. Unicon is about applying the right tech and the right team to solve our clients' issues. In this video, I will demonstrate installing the Shibboleth IDP and configuring Office 365 and the Shibboleth IDP to delegate Office 365 user authentication to our newly installed IDP. This authentication will work for Office 365 web applications and client apps supporting Office 365 modern authentication. The same configuration will also enable SAML-based authentication with the Azure portal. I will not be demonstrating configuring back-channel authentication through SAML ECP. This integration works with Shibboleth IDP version 3.3.2 and it will also generally work with older IDP versions. Before we jump into the demo, let me set the stage for you. I've got an Active Directory setup that has two accounts, the IDP search account and a standard user account that I'll be logging into Office 365 with. I've already gone through claiming a new Office 365 tenant and I've configured it with a custom domain. That custom domain has been validated via DNS validation. That validation process switches the primary domain to the new custom domain, which will prevent us from federating the custom domain. You'll want to make sure another domain, like your on Microsoft.com domain, is flagged as the primary domain. I've also set up a new host name for my IDP in my custom domain's DNS server. In the demo environment, I have a Windows server with the Java SDK already installed and I've already downloaded the Shibboleth IDP version 3.3.2 and the Azure Active Directory module for Windows PowerShell, as well as the Microsoft Online Services Sign-In Assistant. Now let's move over to our Windows server. So getting started, in the downloads directory, I have the Azure Active Directory PowerShell module that we'll need to install. Java has already been installed, and uh, this is the Office, uh, Microsoft Office online uh, module that we'll see in a moment when we work with PowerShell. And our first step though is really to install the IDP. Click Next, we'll accept the licensing terms. We are going to install Jetty. We're gonna configure for Active Directory. And this is going to be the host name of our IDP. And the scope will just be the top level domain. Okay, we will click next here. The domain for my fictitious company is delransolutions.local. We are not gonna use the global catalog, we'll leave that unchecked. And we are going to uh, use a service account. And this account, again, has already been created and we will set the super secret password that I created for it. Okay, we'll let it begin installing, and while we wait a moment or two for it to uh, complete, uh, once Shibboleth IDP has been installed, we have to edit a handful of files. We'll uh, go through and validate and fix up a few of the LDAP connection settings uh, to retrieve attributes from the IDP, or excuse me, from Active Directory. Then we'll go through and make the necessary uh, configuration changes for Office 365. 
then we'll do a little bit of work with uh, PowerShell and we'll uh, set up the trust from the Office 365 side. And then we'll do some testing and we'll see how things go. Perfect. So we will drill down into our installation, Program Files x86, Shibboleth, and the IDP. And in the comp directory, we're going to start working with our LDAP IDP file. Open that in Notepad. And we'll just confirm these settings. Uh, we are not using uh, TLS in this example. So we are going to uncomment that and set it to false. So we've uncommented start TLS, which defaults to true, and uh, the, the use SSL is uh, defaults to false, so we are good there. We will scroll down here. Uh, the base DN is looking good. The subtree search is good. SAM account user, that's all good. Our service account, it qualified that. The password, for some reason, the IDP does, the IDP installer, um, does not accept the, the casing, sets it lowercase and it should be uppercase. And I think we just have one more change that needs to be made, and that is down here. Uh, the end follower defaults to using the UID for lookups, and we want the SAM account name. So there we go. We will go ahead and close that file. And the first thing we need to do to actually begin our Office 365 integration is we need to update the metadata providers file. The metadata providers file is basically just a pointer to a location of metadata. And metadata has our URLs, the endpoints that um, the IDP will send information to the service provider at Office uh, 365 with Microsoft. And I'm just gonna copy a snippet over here and we'll drop it in place here. So essentially we're gonna read from this location from Microsoft, uh, this Federation Metadata XML file. We're gonna store a local copy in case for some reason the service is unavailable for the IDP to reach. Uh, we're still able to, to properly operate. And that's it, that's all we need to do. We'll go ahead and close this file out. The next one we're gonna work on is the relying party XML. The relying party XML is responsible for setting up uh, various configuration options for service providers. And there's a default block and below that is a set of overrides. And there's an example commented out there and we will add our own for Office 365 and Microsoft Azure AD. So we'll place this in the top. Go ahead and paste it there. There we go. Essentially what we're doing is anytime a re an authn request comes in for URN Federation Microsoft Online, this block will kick in. And for this configuration, we've enabled two different profiles, the uh, SAML2 SSO and the SAML2 logout. And the real key here is that uh, Azure AD does not want the XML uh, assertions to be encrypted. They should be passed in clear text. Now that's not to say the data is gonna transport over the network uh, unencrypted. We're simply talking about the payload in the XML uh, response. So now we'll close that out. And we are going to go into the attribute resolver. And we've got two sets of changes we need to make to this file. Let me grab those snippets. Snippet one is this one right here. So we are defining two IDP attributes. These IDP attributes are going to read information from Active Directory, uh, various user attributes, and then it's gonna do something with them. The first one that we're looking at is the immutable ID, and I will drill in so we can look at that a little more closely. The immutable ID, that's our internal IDP name for it, 
is going to be read from the uh, a connection called my LDAP, which we will define in just a moment. And it's going to get uh, read, or we're going to read the object GUID attribute for the given user that's authenticating. And for this one, that's it. Um, we will we'll come back to this immutable ID later, uh, but uh, that one's complete. The next attribute we need for our Office 365 integration is the user ID. Uh, again, we're gonna read from our directory connection, which is uh, Active Directory, and we're gonna read the user principal name attribute and then bring that in and store it. We've got this additional item here called attribute encoder, and that element defines how the XML is going to look when we throw this data into the XML or when the IDP throws it into the um, uh, uh, SAML response. So it's gonna be a SAML2 string. Its name, this will be the name that's in the XML, is IDP email. And just to help us along, because sometimes attribute names are pretty uh, ugly, uh, we have a friendly name that's not used by um, any of the, the service providers, or at least they're not supposed to use it, uh, but it's there to help us uh, correlate back to our definition. In this case, I've matched the name user ID with the ID uh, in the IDP settings, but this could be anything we want to call it. We could call it user principal name if we wanted to match it back to the uh, source attribute. Okay, so that part is done. We are going to go to the bottom of the file. And we are going to define a new data connector and drop it in right here. Actually, we'll go below. That's the normal place for it in uh, ship configurations. It's so right there. So those various properties that I went through in the LDAP.properties files, those key definitions that were in that file map into this file. This is where they actually become real, is in here. If you already have a, an LDAP directory data connector defined, you'll need to add in this additional option after the filter template, and that is the LDAP property element. The big key to this is that it, the name is a Java naming LDAP attributes binary, and the value is our object GUID. Object GUID in Active Directory is stored as binary data, so we need to tell the data connector to convert it into a base 64 value. Otherwise, we'll have uh, potentially have object GUID collisions, because when that value is converted into a string, uh, any high order bits that don't make sense for a normal string get replaced essentially with a, a null character or a block, a generic character. And then you'll end up having IDs, uh, object GUIDs that match. So this isn't, you know, this is just a minor little change that we have to make for that. In my case, because I am not using uh, the TLS, I'm gonna remove this trust file element, which will cause an error if it's left in for me. So we're gonna save that. That should be all the changes we need to the attribute resolver. So let's close that and we'll move on to the attribute filter. Now the attribute filter is responsible for releasing IDP attributes to service providers. Got one more snippet here to bring in for this. And we'll just drop this in at the top of the file. So what we have is an attribute filter policy that we've defined for Windows Azure AD. It's going to activate when the authn request is coming from this entity ID. And we're going to release the user ID. We're going to release the immutable ID. And we can determine that we can see that by this permit value rule in both of these definitions. And then we have a deny value rule for the transient ID. And the transient ID is uh, the subject name ID format that's used by the IDP by default. And we're just gonna you know, basically take care of and force the IDP to not release it. 
uh, we'll be producing another uh, name ID format and value uh, in our next configuration file. So we'll save that, let's close, and we will work on this last file here, SAML name ID. And there we are, our XML file. Okay, let me grab a snippet and we'll talk about it. So Microsoft Office 365 and Azure Active Directory require a persistent name ID format, but we're not gonna use the built-in one because we want a, a static value to be used and not a, a unique identifier generated. So let's go ahead and paste that in here. So basically what we've done is we've taken this uh, bean definition right here, and w this has been rewritten now in the full uh, syntax for uh, a definition for the SAML2 generator. Basically, we need to add in this block here that says not to execute if our entity ID matches Azure AD Office 365. Now, you'll also notice that this block is commented out. We don't need to uncomment this, just like this one is, unco is commented out. Uh, it's just not needed, but if we ever do, then we'll want to use uh, this version. And I'm also going to just take that out to alleviate any confusion down the road. The one that will kick in, or generator, is this one here. So we're going to create a URN Oasis name, yada, 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 persistent identifier type using the immutable ID as its value but only when the URN Federation Microsoft Online Entity ID has been passed in the authentication request in the SAML. And that's it, that's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and save that file. We will uh, need to restart the IDP. So we'll start the Services Manager. There we go. We're gonna jump down to the S's and there's our shibboleth daemon. Let's go ahead and restart it. And we're gonna back up a directory. We'll go into the logs directory. And we basically just wanna make sure that we have a clean restart. Go ahead and see if it's gotten through. Shut down and restart. Okay, so we've got logs with the shutdown. Uh, let's go ahead and close that and see if we've gotten further along. Oh yeah, that scroll bar has definitely shrunk. So we're basically scrolling, looking for anything that isn't an info level uh, item. And so far everything is looking really, really good. Fantastic, that's what we want to see. So, we'll go ahead and close it. And the next thing we're gonna do is go back to downloads. We're gonna install these two PowerShell uh, modules, so let's do the Azure AD one first. These are both pretty quick. And I just accepted all the defaults there, and that one is now done. We will do the other one. Okay, that one is completed as well. For the remainder of our task, we're going to use PowerShell. And we're gonna launch it from this shortcut so that we load in the Azure Active Directory module for PowerShell. Now before we go ahead and finish our configuration, our integration, uh, we still have the 
Office 365 side of things to do, we're gonna validate that the IDP is returning the attributes that we're expecting it to. So we are going to use a tool as part of the IDP. So we're gonna change the directory to program files x86. We are going to go into the shib directory, IDP, and into the bin directory. And um, the command we're gonna use is AACLI, and I've got that in the clipboard. Let me paste it in here. So what this command is going to do is run AACLI, which is basically going to do a mock um, attribute retrieval. So it's going to pretend that an authn request has come in from the URN uh, Federation Microsoft Online, and it's going to pretend that Jay Gasper is the authenticated user, and then it's gonna kick back the attributes that, it, uh, that all the rules uh, produce. So we'll run that, and we can see here that we have um, an immutable ID, IDP attribute, and we've got this nice pretty value. Remember, this is the one that's the binary uh, that gets base64 encoded. And then we also have the user ID. And this is what I will type in when I go into Office 365, either through the web or when I'm authenticating uh, through um, other applications. So that's looking good. The IDP is now ready to take requests from Office 365. So now let's go ahead and finish uh, the integration by configuring Office 365 and the Azure Active Directory to now recognize our IDP. So the first thing we need to do is authenticate our PowerShell session with um, Office 365 and Azure Active Directory. So let me put in, this is my tenant admin account. Okay, I am going to copy the password over. And assuming this returns, like it just did, we are now authenticated. So the next thing we need to do is set up a bunch of variables that we're going to use in a PowerShell command that actually federates our tenant. So let me zoom in here. So our first variable that we are setting up is the domain that we are going to federate. And this is my test lab, my account uh, domain that I have. This is just a display name for our IDP. So you can set this to whatever you want to. This next URL is the endpoint that Azure Active Directory will send SAML-based authn request to when we need to authenticate a user. This next, the URI, is the entity ID of my IDP. This was automatically generated for me when Shibboleth was installed. And the final kind of easy one to talk about is this logout endpoint. So when we're wrapping up our Office 365 session and we click the logout button in the, uh, in the web page, it's going to clear the sessions there and then it's gonna route the user to this endpoint so that the IDP can shut down uh, the regular user session that it has. These next two uh, variables are working in tandem. Basically, we are doing a shortcut here. Instead of dealing with the uh, IDP signing cert file itself, we're going to read that into a certificate object, and then we are going to uh, convert that object into string data. And our certificate basically is just that data. So instead of messing with that um, and taking out extra line breaks and things like that, we're gonna let uh, code do the work for us. Now this next command that we need to run is the one that's actually kind of the point of no return. Not that we can't go back, but it is, uh, that's, this is the command that's going to tell the IDP, or excuse me, tell Office 365, yes, federate. Okay. 
And there we go. So we're going to run the MSOL domain authentication uh, set for our domain for our, um, let's bump over just a little bit. This is wrapping uh, our fed branding. Oh, that's our display name. We're going to federate. We are going to, this is our endpoint that the request will be sent to. This is our certificate data. This is our issuer, our entity ID, and our logout URL is caught in the wrap here. And then our preferred authentication for this domain for my DellRanSolutions.com domain is to use SAML, uh, the SAML protocol. So we're gonna hit enter, and if everything goes well, it will come back with just that. So our domain's been federated. And the next thing I do before I can actually test is I need to add a user to this tenant. So using the value of the immutable ID up here, I'm going to build a command and I have a snippet of it. So this is gonna create a new user with uh, my display name. We're gonna pass in the UPN and we're not gonna, we're just gonna set this block credential to false. The usage location is the US, our user is gonna be US located. And this is that value that uh, came out of the uh, IDP attribute um, uh, dump that we did. So let's go ahead and run that. And there we go. We now have a user set up, ready to test, but this user is not licensed, so we need to do that. In order to give the user license, we will run the MSOL account skew command, and this is gonna dump back our options for this user. And let me grab, I'm gonna do another snippet instead of trying to type this next one. Paste that in there. So this is going to uh, license our user, and this is the um, UPN. And the last thing we need to do is take this account SKU that we have here, copy it, we'll paste it in between double quotes, and we will execute this. So basically we're gonna assign a business premium license to the jgasper user. So that is now completed. We should be ready to test. So let's back out there. Let's bring up Chrome, which is gonna work better with Office 365 than the old IE that's on the server. And let's go ahead and give this a test. So we're gonna go to office.com. We're going to sign in. And we've got uh, my account in here. Let's just walk through the whole thing though. Jgasper at DellRanSolutions.com. Click next. And this is good. We're being redirected to our IDP. We're getting an error because I'm using a self-signed certificate. In this case, that's expected. In a real world scenario, you would not wanna see this. And here's our IDP authentication page. Let me log in. And there we go. I was authenticated. We'll go ahead and say yes. Remember me. And I'm not going to take the tour. I'm not going to worry about time zones, and we can see that I am now authenticated into Office 365 using the Shibboleth IDP and Active Directory as the authentication source. And as a added bonus, we can also authenticate into the Azure portal with that same configuration. So I'm going to demonstrate going into the Azure AD portal, selecting my user as a global administrator, and then logging into the, into the Azure portal with that account. 
So to start this demo, I've logged into the Office 365 Admin Center using the Tenant Admin account. And we can see here that I've got two accounts. I've got the admin account that I'm currently logged into, but I want to allow my federated account to authenticate into the Azure portal as a global administrator. And the reason I'm doing global administrator really is so that when the user logs in, there's something interesting for them uh, to see. So to do that, we're gonna go into the admin center's node at the bottom, uh, click on Azure AD. That's gonna log my tenant account, my tenant admin account into the portal. We're gonna go into Azure Active Directory. We will click on users. Click on my federated John Gasper account. And over here in directory role, we will set that to global administrator and click save. Okay, now we're gonna switch back to my uh, machine that has that IDP set up. And we'll go ahead and just to show you there's no sleight of hand going on here. We will log into Azure portal. Well, we'll bring up the login page and we will see that I am not authenticated. Okay. Now let's go back to Office 365. We'll sign in. That brings me to my Shibboleth IDP. Click login. And I'm now at the Office uh, 365 dashboard. Let's try going straight into the portal, the Azure portal. And we will see that it did sign me directly in and We've got um, you know, the various uh, resources available to us uh, over here. And I can administer those accounts. So theoretically, I could have gone the other direction. I could have signed into the Azure portal first it would have sent me to my IDP. Once I authenticated, it would have brought me in. And then I could have just single signed on directly into Office 365. It would not have prompted me uh, to, uh, to authenticate through the IDP since that single sign on session was already established with Azure Active Directory. So as we wrap up, here are a few resources to get you going. The big one is the companion document found at aka dot ms slash shibboleth. If you need any help implementing this solution or anything else with shibboleth, feel free to reach out to us at Unicon via our website.